Hi, my name is Steve Houston, and I got something for you today I think you're going to appreciate. If you're new to this channel, remember we talk about final expense, mortgage section, all things financial services, IMOs and comp plans, and we look at all these things. We provide third-party documentation. We discuss the facts. We allow you to decide what's best for you and your future. Again, this is Sunday. It's Ramble Day. Wednesdays we do a video, which is our agent training series. This past week we did a video on critical period. I think it's worth you watching. I think you can be able to use it in some of your appointments in the home. So I encourage you to go out there and watch that. I'll try to put up here if I remember right. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, mash the bell for instant notifications, make some comments, and let me know what it is you'd, you'd like to, me to discuss uh, or comment on. And we'll, uh, maybe it'll be in an upcoming video. Um, and share the video out to other people that may, you may know that's in the industry. This week, we're going to talk about IMOs. This is probably the number one text email or phone call that I get during the course of the week. It is, Steve, what's the best IMO or what IMO are you with? I hesitate to answer that on text because it's not the only consideration that you should be considering. How's that? There are other factors, but let's talk about the IMOs for the first part of the video today. Again, people call me all during the course of the week. What is the best IMO? And yes, there are vast differences, so we're going to examine them. What do the IMOs provide the agents? Well, uh, you can hear IMO to IMO battleground. Let me get that off the, off the board, and so we can talk about that for a second, okay? What do the IMOs provide you and I as an agent? In our industry, the IMOs really kind of act like brokers uh, in the real estate industry, meaning that they have those relationships with the carriers uh, already set up, uh, that we can go ahead and contract with. And even though uh, those carriers are with that IMO, one thing you want to look for is, are you getting paid by the carrier or by the IMO? And if it's by the IMO, in my humble opinion, you should run away and run away quickly. You want to get paid from the billion dollar carriers that we represent, uh, because as long as you hold a license, and you contract with that carrier, you're reasonably assured you're going to get paid. If that money flows through a third party, uh, chances are they're going to go out of business or they can change the rules at any given time, and you lose uh, uh, what we work so hard for in this business, which is our obviously our upfront commissions uh, from the sales we make, but the residual income and the trails that are on those products. So I, again, I would uh, want to get paid directly. As long as I hold my license, I'm going to get paid on business I've written in the past. Right. So let's discuss what these IMOs are and what their function is. So basically, here you are, right? You're contracted with the IMO, and they set that contract rate, which is not necessarily your commission rate. Amount, amount you're going to get paid, some of them are 70%, some are much lower, some are higher, right? And they go out and they contract, they're directly contracted with the insurance companies. Right, like Mutual Omaha, Transamerica, you know, AIG, you know, on and on and on, right? So your relationship is with the IMO and they contract you or get you hired on with these other insurance companies. Now, as I was saying earlier, make sure your money is coming from the insurance carriers and not the IMO. So that's, they're, they're basically in the middle and they should provide services because again, you have a contract rate with the IMO, right? And they control your promotion. So since the IMO controls the contract rate, right? You can come in down here at 50% or lower. I've seen those that charge lower. And then you go up the compensation plan based on your production, right? So that's being controlled by the IMO, right? Just like that, the IMO has a contract rate with these insurance carriers. So they're making a percentage off of your production, right? So they control this part, you come in at 70% or whatever. They allow you to move up the compensation plan, right? And they have a different percentage with these carriers. And so they're making a percentage off your production, right? So they obviously should provide you some services because they're making money off your production. And the value that you create with the IMO is your production, and that's how you get promoted. So let me clean this off for a second. Okay, so what can we expect from the IMO, right? Okay, I already told you one, which is the carrier relationships, right? I don't think that's spelled right, but we'll give me some slack today. This is Scott Steve's and slack today, right? Carrier relationships. So uh, insurance companies and their products is what they bring to the table. 
right? I already talked about the compensation plans. This is controlled by the IMO, not by the carriers. So you can come in, like I said before, at 50%. I've seen some as low as 30%, go up to 110% and more, right? Now, again, there's things that there's a trade-off between high contract, good leads, services, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of a balance. Uh, if you're a seasoned agent, then maybe a high contract rate where there's no support is good for you. That you have to decide for yourself, right? Uh, they should provide training, like I said before, training and support. Right? They also should provide, uh, and that training support should be regional uh, and national, and I'm, in my opinion, it should be free. Right? Leads. I'm going to go into these a little bit further here in a second, but let's just talk about what they should provide. And in my opinion, uh, the better IMOs should have, own their own direct mail house. Right? Then they control the quality of the leads. Right? Very, very important. Technology. That's what they provide you, right? Uh, and maybe even agency building opportunities. So if you wanted to build your own agency, uh, hire your own agents, you could do that. And then, of course, you make an, an override off what those agents produce. Now, big thing, not all IMOs are created equal. <laughs> Thus is the reason why you're calling me all week. Not all IMOs are created equal. So, so very true. Now, they want to make it sound like they're either equal or slightly better than the IMOs, and you have to dive down deep to find out what makes them different, right? So let's talk about that, right? So now, let's start out with carrier relationships. I'm probably not going to go do, do this all, all the way through on, on the whiteboard because I think hopefully you're taking some notes, but we'll, we'll try to jot some things down. So care relations, here's what you need. Look, you need some non-medical options, especially in the mortgage section and final expense industry or the, the niche market. Uh, most of that is being generated by direct mail. Most of the leads that you and I would work, if you're working a leads-based sales IMO, many of them are, um, then they're generating those leads off direct mail, flyers, what have you, uh, mailers, postcards, whatever it is. And usually the hook is, no medical exam, right? So you need uh, an IMO that provides you a lot of carriers that has a, that have non-med options or products. Not one or two, but many. Because again, in our business, our job, yours and mine, is to be able to match the, the client, their health conditions with the right product at the best price, right? So we're, we're all about matching options, right? Because we don't set the price, so that we want to be able to go to multiple companies and find the best option for that particular prospect's age, medical conditions, all that stuff with the right product at the best price, right? That's what our job is. Uh, the next thing is, is, and if you don't do that well, then you open yourself up for replacement by another agent who's going to go in there and do a better job than you did and provide the same thing you gave them at a lower price. You don't want to do that. You want to set them up with the right product right from the start. So you also want to have medical options or what we call in the insurance industry. Okay, so you also want to have medical options. If you're not too far away from your test or your exam, those are called fully underwritten products, meaning blood exam. They're gonna to have to see a nurse. They're gonna get stuck with a needle right in the arm, okay? And, I, and you need to be able to explain that correctly, and you need to talk about the risk involved in doing that. Okay, so the next one is you want to make sure your IMO has enough guaranteed issue products. Why? Because you're going to run across people that are unhealthy, had cancer, whatever. And you want to be able to provide, as an independent agent in this industry, you want to be able to have all these options so when you get a lead, you can cover 99% of the people that inquire, get them some kind of coverage and protect their interests and their families, right? That's what we do. We go out every day and protect families. So if you have a uh, non-med option or a bunch of non-med options, you have a bunch of fully underwritten products and you have some guaranteed issue products, you can get almost everybody covered uh, with some type of coverage and you won't walk away without a sale and you won't walk away without giving them some protection which is which is what your job is is to provide pr protection for everybody regardless of 
their medical conditions, right? So, okay, so next thing we want to talk about is compensation plans, right? Okay, so compensation plans. Uh, and, and again, this comes across my desk all the time, high contracts, um, you know, low cost or free leads. You know, it's a trade-off. You've got to figure out what's best for you. They can't control, if they don't own their own lead generation house, they can't control the amount of times that lead's being sold because that lead generation house, because they don't own it, they're buying from a third party, can sell that lead a thousand times, and they will because they're in the lead selling business, right? There's no incentive or reason why they would, sell, they would stop selling that lead if that particular person bought a product, right? They're just selling leads, okay? And most IMOs, they will co-op, if they own the uh, lead generation house, they will co-op the lead to reduce the cost of the lead to the agent so that you can control your cash flow, at least in starting up. Big one here, and I'm going to write this one down. No recruiting required. One well, of my biggest hot buttons is industry. This is what makes it a network marketing model, in my opinion. If they start showing you a, a, the guidelines for promotion and they start showing you this stuff, you with this person, this person, and, and you, need, you need seven people plus yourself doing $50,000 a, a month in premium in order to get promoted to the 85% level, that is a Network marketing model number one. Number two is it's also an income cap. Right? So what's happening here is I talk about it in my other videos and I'm going to keep talking about it because I don't like it and I think it's unfair. You're not going to get paid what you're worth, right? So if you come in here and you, let's just say, for example, you come in here and you write five apps a week. The average in, app in the industry is $1,000. That's $5,000 worth of premium per week times four. That's $20,000 in what we call APV, which is annual premium volume, right? $20,000 a month, you should be at 100% contract rate. Hopefully you can see that on my board, right? In this model, you wouldn't be. You'd be stuck at 80% which is what? It's a 20% reduction in your earnings or $200 per sale forever. Why is it $200 per sale forever? Because until you get yourself, you, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven counting yourself, doing $50,000 a month, you could be doing $100,000 a month in sales and you're still going to be locked into 80% until you go out and recruit or hire six other people, seven counting yourself, to do $50,000 a month, not written, but what we call issue paid. That means it has to be issued and paid commissions before you can get advanced to the 85%. People tell me on the phone all the time, well, you know, I know that you, I can't get promoted until I have seven people, but I plan on recruiting anyways, and uh, so that's not a big problem. I don't have a problem with that. Well, you should because here's the industry statistics. About 10%, it's probably not on my board. I'm looking at the monitor here, see if it's on my board. About 10% of people that you hire will ever put their name on an application, which means if you need seven, you're going to have to hire 70 people. That's if you follow along with the averages, right? So until you hire 70 people to get seven to do 50,000, you can take a 20% reduction in commissions or $200 per sale. So if you're writing 20 applications a month, five a week, 20 a month, that's 4,000, I gotta do that in red. That's $4,000, right, in commissions per month forever how long it takes for you to get this model built out. So I know I spent way too much time on that, but that's paramount in my book. If, you had, if you're required to recruit people to get paid what you're worth on your personal production, see, in my opinion, you should get paid what you're worth based on the value you bring to the IMO, which is your production, your personal production. If you decide to build an agency, that's great. You should be compensated to do that. But if I'm a top producer, 
or even a part-time producer doing you know five apps a week that's twenty thousand a month I want to get paid what I'm worth on my own pen which should be at the hundred percent contract rate not at the eighty percent so watch the fine print before you sign up with those IMOs right membership clubs I love this one there are IMOs out there that require you to be part of a membership club at a hundred bucks a month or more in order to get promoted I, that that to me is nonsensible okay so I'm gonna I'm doing the production required but now I need to sign up for a membership club at a hundred bucks a month plus in order to be eligible to get promoted up the compensation plan for production that I'm already doing and deserve makes no sense so watch out for that right you want to be able to get promoted every two months on these in most of these companies some are three months uh, and you want to make sure that when once you are promoted up to the contract rate whatever it is that it's permanent and there are no production requirements to maintain that level right so that's a big one in my book and all these IMOs do that but you got to watch the fine print and uh, make sure you're interviewing the IMO and asking the right questions the next thing is training and support local regional and national events and they should be free now most of these IMOs have national events where they fly everybody in it's a big uh, production and that's typically going to be a charge but there should be uh, home office training and support there should be local uh, and uh, regional events that you could plug into one day sales events that are free and no charge to the agents I had someone call me a day and said there's a, that they had to go to a boot camp to get to, and before they could actually get signed up and that boot camp was 25 bucks not a lot of money I get it I understand it it's 25 bucks not a lot of money for most people but again the IMOs they're in business for themselves there is a such thing as co called cost of doing business right if, if they're trying to attract you to their company it's no different than having a a, uh, a job fair how many times were you charged to go to a job fair to, to look at the companies and see if you wanted to work there makes no sense it's just a money grab it's all it is to so be so watch out for that right um, the IMO should not charge for training like I said I think I've said it enough times uh, they should also answer the phone the agent should be able to call the home office and and they answer the phone and not be referred back to that upline Okay, upline, downline, sideline, these things are indications that you're in, involved in a network market. Now, many of those things are used kind of interchangeably. Uh, the real defining factor, again, like I said, is no recruiting required. If you can go all the way up to the top of the comp plan from 70% to 110% of whatever it is, bottom line is whatever the top is, you need to be able to get up that comp plan without having to recruit or build an agency. If you can do that, then it's not a network marketing type model. If, if they start drawing circles, your first sign right uh, again they, you should be able to call the home office find out uh, and not be referred back to that upline because here's the problem and I get this a lot of times is people call me all the time Steve I'm in a home can you help me I go what what's going on with your, your with your manager well your manager I called him I'm in the home trying to fill out an application uh, because I made a sale and he told me I can't help because I've never made a sale in my life I'm just a recruiter I said well let me talk to your upline and find out if he can help me and call that and guess what he says I'm a recruiter I never sold anything that's what that's why you have such a problem in this industry in the blind leading the blind is you got it attracts these network marketers who get in and have this philosophy of some will some won't so what recruit in mass and uh, uh, you know someone gonna make it some won't and uh, you know somebody's gonna come in here and, and tear it up and make me a million dollars yes the IMO should provide also the same type of mentoring and coaching or at least some training that's free to the agent and be able to at least answer the phone and be a helpmate to that uh, uh, particular agent that's something you should look out for as well um, but again let's be honest with those kind of models if they're if they're requiring you to recruit uh, that's to slow you down from moving up the comp plan push you down and push the money up to the upline right going back to this two hundred dollars here this two hundred dollars per sale where do you think that two hundred dollars is going to if they're not giving it to you because they're waiting for you to build this, this uh, team model out here this is going up right so they slow you down from the from being able to be promoted basically so they got a real hot top producer that comes in and you know can rocket up the comp plan really fastly they're not gonna let you do that they're gonna keep you down until you build this model out right so this money is going up to the upline so it's going right so they push you down to push money up to the upline so be careful this model most are recruiters and have never 
put their name on an app ever. I believe you have to leave the front in this industry if you're going to build an agency, and you leave by the front by putting the uniform on and going out there knee cap to knee cap every single day and doing exactly what you're asking of your agents to do. That's called leading from the front. If they're not doing that and it's a do as I say model rather than do as I do model, then in my opinion, you should move away from that model. I was raised to believe that you can't teach something to somebody that you've never done yourself, right? So let's move on. Leads. Um, do they own their own lead mailing house, their own direct mailing house? Uh, usually speak, I get calls about this all the time too. Hey Steve, over here they're going to give me, you know, I can, I can take a lower contract and they'll give me free leads or I can go to a higher contract and I got to pay big bucks for leads, right? Free leads are free leads. They usually equate to no sales. Uh, there's nothing free in life or uh, you're going to have to have a thousand leads and dial and dial and dial and get beat up and hung up on and swear, sworn at and cursed at and, you know, whatever um, with these older leads. Can you make sales? I talk to people all day long and they get free leads. And they last night program about 90 days and they're out, out of the industry. Because uh, what we, one thing we do know is, you know, like I said before, there's nothing free in life. And if they're free, they've been worked by a lot of people. And beyond that, let's talk about recycled, redated old leads sold a thousand times. Or, you know, they, sometimes, some of these IMOs have nine different lead levels, right? Um, and that's because they're trying to recover the cost of, the, of that lead that they spent to generate. And no problem with that. Uh, look, you know, and typically speaking, they're losing money in the leads unless that someone makes that uh, makes a sale, right? Generally speaking, most of these IMOs lose money on leads unless you and I go out there and make a sale, right? They're not in the, in the lead selling business. Not that the IMOs aren't. There are companies that sell leads that are in the leads business, but most of these IMOs are only generating leads or providing leads. So you'll go out and make a sale. If you don't make a sale, generally speaking, it's a loss, right? So sell them nine times is a matter of them trying to recover. The big issue I have is they, they go from A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 5, 4, 3, 2, 6, whatever it is, uh, and, then, and then it goes back to the front line again, and you and I are now paying full price for a lead that's four or five years old. That's the problem, and that's what you have to watch out for, right? So uh, enough said about that, right? But it's important to understand, here's where uh, the IMO not owning their own milling house really ends up being hard on the agent financially. There's no way to track how many times that lead has been sold to an agent if the IMO doesn't own the lead because it's coming from an outside milling house that sells their, their leads to other IMOs and directly to agents. They're not tracking that lead to find out when or if that lead ever bought an insurance policy. That's the way it should work, right? You have to have world-class technology. The IMO has to have world-class technology, uh, which is required to assure that you and I are not buying leads that have been sold an insurance product. That's huge because what happens is if they had the, the technology, right? And I'm talking about OPT here. I'm talking about a back office platform, a portal. So when you enter your application in, it attaches the lead to the application, removes the lead from the system. So when you and I don't buy a lead because they just bought a policy two weeks ago. So last thing on leads, in some of these IMOs, they allow their managers to buy up all the leads in the area. So, and then they disperse them to agents on their team that they like or hit certain production requirements or whatever. It's a pecking order kind of thing. And if, you're, if you come in and you're not on that manager's team with the IMO, you're out of luck. And you're not going to be able to get leads other than maybe final expense leads. And generally speaking, in our industry, mortgage retention leads are preferred over final expense just by the way that they're generated by direct mail. So let's move on. Technology. Let's talk about technology for a second. Again, my, another one of my pet peeves. There never should be a charge for technology. Remember, these IMOs should provide this for the money that you're making them. In order to attract good quality agents like you and I, they need to provide certain services. Well, technology, in my opinion, is one of those services, right? Technology should include a complete website that you can upload your, your, uh, your business to, your applications. You should be able to track your applications from submission to commission and interact with the insurance companies on your pendings, right? Rather than call all the different insurance companies to find out where your application stands, which becomes a humongous administration task, you should be able to log into your website, see all your pending business from today, last week, last month, last year, as well if you're building an agency, see all theirs and see what's pending, why it's pending, what's missing in terms of maybe some requirements, addendums, whatever, and run your business in about 30 minutes 
rather than having to call different insurance companies to find out what you have and why it's not been issued and paid, right? Because at the end of the day, you've got to get that application from submission to commission, get paid, get it issued, get your clients protected, right? Plus, there should be a mobile app for running your business and submitting your applications, right? I go to my car and I submit my applications right with my mobile phone, and by the time I get to my next appointment, that application is in the underwriter's hands, right? Uh, and you should also be able to do e-apps. Now, I'm talking about doing paper apps in the home. I like paper apps. I can do a paper app. Take a, I can go to my car and upload it with my smartphone to, uh, to the dashboard, which then goes to the underwriter before I even get to my next appointment, right? So you want to have that. Plus, you want to have a training portal for not only for you, but also for your agents, right? So that's technology, right? And then the last thing is that agent building opportunity. Look, not everybody should build an agency because building an agency is about people, right? You may be a very good producer, but you may not like dealing with people. Maybe building an agency is not for you because once you start building an agency, you've left the insurance business. Now you're in the people business and it's a completely different game. Not everybody's cut out for that. But lastly, if you're gonna build an agency, keep in mind that the only way to have integrity with your own people, your agents, is you've got to leave in the front. This is not a do as I say business. It's a do as I do. You've got to go out there, put the uniform on, like I said earlier, and sit face to face with clients so you're on the cutting edge of what it takes to get this business done successfully so you can turn around and teach that to your agents. You've got to go out there and put your name on applications every week. This whole idea of getting in and being a recruiter, recruiting hundreds of people and hoping someone makes you rich doesn't work. And come back and see me six months from now when you have 50 people all duplicating your activity, which is nothing, right? Again, like I said, not all these IMOs are created equal, but that's what I'll be looking for in the IMO. Now, the reason why I made this video is, is that's the number one question I get every week is, Steve, what IMO are you with? And what's the best IMO? But I think you're missing something, right? Is there are distinct, very, very important, distinct differences between the IMOs. And I believe we're with the best one, okay? And I gave you a lot of reasons why. There are more reasons why right? You want to be truly be with a company that's, that sets you up for success. But that day to day getting in, you know, getting your license, getting in the field, what else is there? Because I, I, again, you can go from IMO to IMO to IMO to IMO, still missing what I believe is the most undervalued part of this entire uh, decision. And that is who is going to be coaching you and mentoring you early on. You got to remember that you got to be with somebody that's successfully building their own agency, has a lot of agents leading from the front uh, that can work with you to, be, to get you successful. And I'm talking about a mentor uh, or a coach, not an upline, mentor and coach. And the difference is, is this somebody that's done it before, right? Uh, apart from the IMO, because the IMO in most cases has, you know, eight, nine, 10,000 agents. They're not going to give you that same hands-on support as someone that you can call uh, or text or email and get instant help when you need it, right? And again, it, I think it's critical that mentor-coach relationship is critical to your success, to your steps to success in the field and to cash flowing your business. Brian Tracy said once before, the great secret of success is that there are no secrets of success. There are only timeless principles that have proven effective uh, throughout the century. Well, those timeless principles that coach or mentor can teach you.